Hi everybody and welcome to my new true crime channel, True Crime Educational. My name is Shauna and I am from South Wales in the UK, which is where our first case will take place. I do encourage you to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content. This is my first video and I would appreciate any support. Thank you to everyone watching, let's get started. I want to begin with a disclaimer for this video. This video was made for educational and documentary purposes. This video is made up of information that I have collected from the internet and the intent is not to harm or offend anybody watching this video. This video contains themes of child destruction and sexual assault. I would understand entirely if these subjects are too sensitive to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Our first video is of a solved true crime case of Nikita Grender Brunnock, known as Nikita Grender, who was sadly taken from us on the 5th of February 2011 at the age of 19, as well as her unborn daughter, Kelsey May, who was due on the 18th of February 2011, just two weeks after she was sadly taken from us. They were both sadly taken by a monster who sexually fantasised about Nikita for years prior to this case taking place, which turned into a fatal obsession. This case took place in my hometown of Newport, South Wales, on an estate called Broadmead Park, Lisworthy. Nikita Grenda Brunnock, also known as Keat by close friends and family, was born on the 19th of December 1991. She came from an incredibly strong family with great family values, who taught her how to be treated and how to treat other people correctly. She was a beautiful, smart, popular, fun-loving teen who cared a lot about other people around her and always had a smile on her face. Her parents described her as happy-go-lucky. She was loved by many and when she got taken from this world it really did shock the community and the nation. I was only 14 at the time of this case, and I remember it like it was just yesterday. The shock, the horror, and the empty streets after. Nikita lived at number 51 Broadmead Park, in a flat with his 17-year-old boyfriend, Ryan Mays. Broadmead Park is also the same estate as which Nikita's parents, Paul Brunnock and Marcia Grenda live, and still do to this day. Ryan and Nikita had met when he was just 13 and she's just 15 and basically were inseparable ever since. They had their ups and downs like any couple do and also had their short breaks. They got real serious when Ryan was 17 and moved into their first home together on Corporation Road. Things were going well and a few months later they moved into their flat in Broadmead Park. Ryan and Nikita knew they would spend the rest of their lives together and not long after they moved into their flat they decided to try for a baby, and when they finally received that news in the late spring of 2010, they could not be any happier. They were both so excited and turned their spare bedroom into a nursery ready for the arrival of their baby, which they knew they were going to have a baby girl, and decided on a name, Kelsey May. Ryan worked as a double glazing salesperson, alongside his second cousin and best friend, Carl Anthony Want which Ryan often referred to as his brother and a father figure in his life. Ryan said to reporters at the time that they were happy and excited for the arrival of Kelsey May, who was expected just days after his 18th birthday, a day now tainted by his loss forever. Carl Anthony Want was born in July of 1984. He was from Betis in Newport, South Wales and was 26 at the time of this case. He had a troubled background. He had the problems of history at school, low educational attainment, and also had previous convictions for burglary. He was just a typical antisocial offender, really. He painted a macho image of himself. He would always brag about being around girls and go into explicit detail about what he was doing with these girls, most of the time being sexually. Some of these girls would only be teenagers. He also had a girlfriend called Rachel Bird, who also had two kids. 
People who knew Carl said he made himself out to be something he was not. In his life, Carl had joined the army, completed the training and left. He claimed to be a bodybuilder and quit that too. He also did a stint as a nightclub bouncer before becoming a double glazing salesperson on the same firm as Ryan Mays, which was his cousin. He had a speech impediment and it is believed this is why he put on such a front it was to mask his vulnerability. Carl Wandt and Ryan Mays spent a lot of time together and Nikita hated this. She hated Carl as she thought he was a bad influence on her partner Ryan. Nikita also knew, as did everyone else who knew Carl, that he had a massive cocaine habit and also a steroid habit and used to even steal off his own family members to pay for those habits. Sometimes totaling to thousands, he would get into debt and also involve Ryan, resulting in being threatened once by the people who they had owed money to. Carl was always around Nikita and Ryan's new flat and would never leave them alone. Keita would often ask him if he was going home and he would only ever go home to get changed and come back again. He was pretty much joined at the hip with Ryan but Carl really had another agenda. Secretly, Carl had an infatuation with Nikita for years which sadly became a fatal obsession. He even said to investigators during one of his many interviews that every time he felt like having sex he would think of Nikita. Nikita would even spend hours around her parents' house in order to avoid Carl because she really did not like him. One time, he was caught looking at photos of Nikita in her underwear at a party that Nikita and Ryan held at their new flat. Somehow, Carl got a hold of her phone and searched through all the photos that Nikita and Ryan had shared privately between them. Nikita caught him. She wasn't happy and she got angry calling him all the names under the sun. And to be honest, who would blame her? That sort of thing is private and something that she and Ryan had shared privately. And he should definitely not be looking through her phone at all, never mind at private photos like that. This is where red flags really started to show for Carl. But everyone sort of ignored this or didn't really see how twisted he really was. It was a norm for Carl. He was just repulsive. Most people saw how he was with girls and how he valued them and was quite disgusted by it. They were disgusted by his views towards women, but no one could ever predict what he would do. Even though Carl had a girlfriend of his own, Rachel Bird, who he also pretty much lived with at the time as he didn't actually have any fixed address, he was also having casual relationships with teenage girls and none of this satisfied him. Carl was actually jealous of the relationship that Ryan and Nikita had, and he wanted it. He couldn't understand why his younger cousin could get the beautiful girl, why his younger cousin had the house and a stable job at such a very young age. He couldn't understand that, and he really wanted it. And the fact that he did not have that made him very angry. And we all know that the mixture of jealousy and anger is a ticking time bomb which unfortunately his built up jealousy and anger brings us to the events of today's case. On the 5th of February, 2011, Nikita's neighbor, Sarah Voisey, who lives in the flat below Nikita, woke up to a faint beeping noise around 5 a.m. Unaware it was a fire alarm, she dismissed it for an alarm clock or a mobile phone as she couldn't pinpoint where it was coming from. She then went back to sleep, and at about 7.30am, she woke up again to the same beeping noise and smelt smoke whilst taking out her baby's nappy to the rubbish. In between 7.30 and 7.45, she actually realised that the flat above was on fire, and that beeping noise was in fact the fire alarm. She said, quote, My flat was getting hot and stuffy, and I kept hearing this beeping sound. She phoned the fire brigade at 7.50am and they told her to leave her flat and knock on Nikita's door to see if anyone was in there who needed help. She frantically knocked at the door for about 10 minutes but got no answer. She said she knocked so hard her hands were red and sore. At 
the same time at 7.50am, Nikita's parents Marcia and Paul get the phone call no parent wants to receive from Ryan's mother, Kelly. She had rang them to tell them that Nikita's flat was in fact on fire and to get over there as quickly as possible. Nikita's parents' house was only actually about a three minute walk away from Nikita's flat. They frantically got there as quick as they could and got there shortly after firefighters arrived at 8am. All they could do was just stand there, outside the flat, not knowing if their daughter was inside at the time, but deep down knowing that was in fact the case. Ryan and Carl shortly arrive after, confirming Ryan was not in fact with Nikita, and Paul lashes out at Ryan for only just getting home from a night out, leaving his eight-month pregnant girlfriend at home alone all night. Her parents were furious with Ryan for not being there. Maybe this would not have happened if he was, but this was all just raw emotion at the time, and Paul regrets his actions towards Ryan, and, and they have stayed in contact ever since this tragedy took place. At 8am, firefighters arrived at the flat and discovered that the flat was still on fire. They tackled the fire and shockingly, at, eight ten, at 10 past 8 in the morning, the body of Nikita Grender was found on the bed of her burnt-out flat and laying next to her, her little dog Missy, who did not leave her side. The emergency services then had to break the news to Nikita's family who were stood outside helpless and all they did was confirm what everybody knew, that Nikita was in that flat and was no longer with us. At this moment, even though police had not confirmed this was not an accident and in fact a heinous crime, the senior fire investigator said around 9am that morning that something did not look right and it did not take long for investigators to realise that this was in fact a cover-up of a horrific crime due to the way they had found Nikita. They said if she was alive at the time of the fire, she would have tried to escape and failing that, usually people who cannot escape the fire usually try to get as far away from the heat as possible and are often found in the fetal position. This was not the case as Nikita was found on her back, led on her bed, which is where the fire is believed to be started. When they received the autopsy report, they found out that Nikita had been sexually assaulted and stabbed twice. Once in the neck and once in the abdomen, taking the life of her unborn child, Kelsey May. The fire was started as an act to cover any tracks and destroy evidence, which did not work for the perpetrator, as they found DNA evidence at the scene. Police now had a murder investigation on their hands, and Carl Want quickly became their number one suspect. On the 4th of February 2011, the day before Nikita was found, Nikita had gone out with a friend after being at her parents' house earlier on in that day. Little did they know that was the last time they would ever see Nikita alive. Nikita went to a McDonald's around midnight, which was caught on CCTV and then drove around the Newport and Cumbran area with her friend, Jenna Orman. The friend then dropped Keita off around 1am at her flat in Broadmead Park. Earlier that day, Carl had arrived at Ryan and Nikita's flat around 11am that morning. Ryan and Carl went to work from around 11am till 3pm in the Cumbran area. Carl and Ryan stopped off at Ryan and Nikita's flat about 5.15pm so Ryan could get changed after work. Carl had a cigarette in the kitchen and Nikita pretty much ignored that he was there at all. But Carl later says in a statement that Ryan and Nikita was nude on the bed in the bedroom as he walked by and apparently Ryan asked if Carl wanted to have a go with Nikita, implying that they shared her. This was later dismissed in court. Friday the 4th of February 2011 was also the night of Wales versus England in the Six Nations Rugby Tournament and Ryan went out with his best friend Carl Want. They watched the first half of the rugby at Ryan's mother's house around 5.30pm before then travelling to the Star Pub in Maindy about two to three miles away from the Keita's flat 
to watch the second half around 6.15pm. People who were at the pub with the two testified that Carl and some others were going back and forth to Carl's silver x reg Ford Focus to take part in taking drugs. <sighs> Carl said he only had two pints of lager whilst he was there. Then they moved on to a nightclub bar called Revolution around 12 to 12.30 a.m., now coming into the morning of the 5th of February, with another four people whose names were not mentioned. They all keep making trips to Carl's car to take drugs and continue drinking till about 2 a.m. They all then squeezed into Carl's car, all six of them, and drove whilst intoxicated to a house party on Corelli Street, going back towards the main area and arrived at about 2.20 a.m. It is said that whilst they were at the party, Carl just sat there on his phone in the corner alone talking to people on Facebook. At 4am to 4.30am, they all had more drugs delivered to Corelli Street. And about 20 minutes later, Carl told Ryan he was going to his grandmother's house to get some more cigarettes. Ryan did offer to go with him, but Carl said no, as he wasn't going to be long as his grandmother lived close by. The journey should in fact take eight minutes. Carl left the party around 4.50am on the 5th of February. Ryan had rung Rachel, Carl's girlfriend, to see if she'd seen him as he hadn't come back for a long time. Carl didn't get back to the party until 6.15am and came back empty-handed. He said he was not able to wake up his nan to get cigarettes. This was not in fact the case. Carl did in fact go to Nikita's that night. He was caught on CCTV driving away from the direction of his grandmother's house, like I said, towards the direction of Nikita's house, knowing that she would be alone that night. He did not in fact go to his grandmother's house until later on, when he went accompanied with Ryan. At 7.45am, Ryan and Carl leave Corelli Street house party and go to Carl's nan's house. This time he did get cigarettes and was there for about five minutes. Whilst Carl and Ryan were still out at his nan's house, Ryan's mum was on the phone to Nikita's parents to tell them that the flat was actually on fire. Not long after Nikita's parents arrived at the scene, so did Ryan and Carl. Nikita's parents had just been told that Nikita was no longer with us. Everyone is distraught, except Carl, who just stood there with his hands in his pockets like nothing was happening at all. He and Ryan stayed there for a few hours, and Carl provided a statement for the police and provided Ryan with an alibi. Carl then met up with his girlfriend Rachel at 1pm on the 5th of February. She was not happy with Carl as he was meant to go home the day before to watch the rugby and have a curry, but she gave, on, she gave up on waiting around 1am. She said she noticed scratches on his arm, which he said a woman at the pub had done it the night before in an altercation. But Banks's working that night later testified in court that they did not see him in a fight of any sort and there was CCTV to prove that that statement was in fact false. After meeting up with his girlfriend, they then went back to her house in Bettis. He put the clothes he was wearing from the night before on the kitchen floor of his girlfriend's home to be washed. Police start to conduct the investigation and confirm from autopsy that Nikita was in fact murdered and the fire was created as a cover-up. They extracted DNA from inside Nikita's body they did not have much hope, really, due to the damage caused. They were expecting this DNA to be Ryan's, but they also found DNA belonging to Ryan's cousin, Carl Want. They were totally shocked to find this and quickly began to suspect Carl, as he previously said in the statement he'd never had sex with Nikita. They found two knives from an extensive search one of which was found 800 metres away from Nikita's flat, as well as a black glove. The whereabouts of where the second knife was found are unknown, but they both did get sent off to forensics to be tested. 
The police did say it's not uncommon to find these such items unrelated to a particular case, but they still needed to be sent off to be tested. The police search six premises and do house-to-house -house calls and public appeals to gather any evidence possible. They gather CCTV footage, which resulted in needing to speak to four people who may have information that they could use. On the 6th of February, the next day, police make one of many visits to Carl Want. He hands over his trousers, his jacket and the keys to the Ford Focus but he is unable to find the light blue shirt that he wore the night of the murder. He makes a statement saying he never had sex with Miss Grenda, but claims he once met up with her for a cuddle and a kiss three years previously. The CCTV footage that the police recovered from one of the pubs that Ryan and Carl went to on the 4th of February that night actually showed Carl Want still wearing his big thick puffer coat. The same pub as which they had recovered the CCTV was also the pub that he had claimed he had an altercation which resulted in his scratches on his arm. But surely there is no way you would get scratches on your arm if you were wearing a puffer coat that thick. There is an image of the exact coat Carl wore on that night shown on the screen and also a picture of his scratches. It just doesn't add up in my opinion. The day after, on, the f on February the 7th, 2011, Carl Want found his blue t-shirt that he was wearing on the night of Nikita's murder and handed it in, and also made another more detailed statement about his whereabouts on the 4th and 5th of February. I couldn't actually find what he said in his statement. We can only assume that he was just stating the fact that he was at the party and that he didn't go to Nikita's flat. With Carl Want's clothing now sent off to forensics for testing, the police continued their investigation and over 50 officers conducted an extensive search, which as previously I said, they had found two knives and other items which some not known to the public. On Tuesday the 8th of February, Carl Want's silver focus was caught on CCTV that night, driving towards Nikita's flat, which confirmed that he did not in fact go to his nan's as he previously claimed. They seized Carl's car, which was extensively tested. They later confirmed that they had indeed found Nikita's blood underneath the driver's side, car mat and the flooring, and also DNA on the handbrake and steering wheel. They also confirmed that his jacket and t-shirt he had tried to wash also had Keita's DNA, which he had tried to wash away. On Wednesday the 9th of February 2011, police arrest Carl Want on suspicion of murder, but do not reveal the evidence they have on him. For his first six interviews, he answers no comment to everything which the detectives ask him, which says to me, guilty right there. Police continue to investigate, and now they only have 48 hours until either they must charge or let Carl go. Police still appeal publicly for information and manage to speak to three of the four people seen walking by the estate on CCTV. One of them walking by around 3.30am also narrows the time of the crime. Police applied to the court for an extension to keep Carl in custody for another 24 hours, which was granted. On the 12th of February 2011, which was exactly one week after Nikita was murdered, Carl Want was confronted in an interview with the DNA evidence that Forensic had recovered, which had placed him at the scene of the crime, which was found on Nikita herself, and also the evidence which was found in his car and also on his clothing. For some reason, people don't seem to know about Luminol, which is the chemical that police use to recover bloodstains that has previously been washed away. You can wash bloodstains as much as you like. They will always be able to find the stains with Luminol. Anyway, 
As soon as he was confronted with his evidence, he suddenly felt unwell and refused to answer any more questions. Even after 26 interviews ending in mainly a no-comment reply, Gwent police were confident that they had enough evidence to charge Carl Want with the murder of Nikita Grander and baby Kelsey May. That day, shortly after the last interview took place on the 12th of February 2011, exactly one week after the horrific crime, Carl Want was finally charged with murder, child destruction, rape and arson, which he denied all charges claiming he was in a different part of Newport at the time of the murder. As I said, he answered no comment to his interviews until December 2011, months after the crime took place. The family and friends of Nikita just had no closure at all, and they had to endure all those months with no answers. They released a statement to the public thanking them for their ongoing support through such a tragic time for their families. On the 14th of December that year, the prosecution team finally received confirmation from Carl Want's lawyers that the, def- that the defendant, Carl Want, was ready and able to explain why his bodily fluids were at the scene of the crime. His excuse for the evidence found was the statement he made about Ryan previously when Carl had claimed that when he and Ryan had gone back to the flat to get changed after working their shift, Carl apparently had found Ryan and Nikita naked on their bed and Ryan invited Carl to have a go on her as he was walking by for a cigarette, which he accepted. But also, if you remember, he said in a previous interview he has never had sex with her and went to meet her for a kiss and a cuddle three years previously. When officers questioned why he is now deciding to come forward with that statement, he replied and said, quote, My head was all over the place at the time. I thought, how can I be arrested for this? He also said that he did not want to upset his girlfriend, Rachel Bird. But this was all used as evidence against him in court. Finally, nearly a year after the destruction of Carl Want, his trial begins at Newport Crown Court on the 18th of January 2012. He pleads not guilty on all four counts. In his trial, Carl sticks by his allegation about Ryan letting him have sex with Nikita, and Ryan quickly dismisses it, as do the jury. He also claims he has no memory of returning to the house party after leaving to get his alleged cigarettes. His grandmother also testified that Carl did not go there to get cigarettes until after half past seven when he arrived with Ryan. All physical evidence disagrees with Carl's version of events, and after a few weeks of trial, and the family having to face the monster who done this to their beautiful and beloved daughter. They finally get a verdict. On the 22nd of February 2012, Carl Want was found guilty on all four counts, which included one count of murder, one count of child destruction, one count of rape and one count of arson. After only four hours of deliberation, The judge sentenced him to life in prison with a minimum serve of 35 years, which makes him eligible for release in 2047. It is said that during his sentencing, he just yawned it off like it was nothing. Just a pure sign of evil, in my opinion. Just no remorse whatsoever. He even sent flowers to the family of Nikita at the beginning of the investigation. Nikita's mother, Marcia, refused to accept these flowers because deep down she knew she had a gut feeling that he had something to to do with her daughter's death. In my opinion, 35 years is not enough. He did try to appeal the sentencing to get it reduced. He claimed that 35 years was too long and the fact that Kelsey May lost her life should not be counted as an aggravating factor, which is just unbelievable. He took a young mother's life and her unborn, fully formed child. Never mind that he covered it up in such a horrific way, which shows he only cared about himself and not about what he had done and what pain he had caused. Thankfully, this appeal was denied. One of the three judges that rejected this appeal, Lord Justice Pitchford, said he is plainly a very dangerous man. It is impossible to argue that this minimum turn is manifestly excessive. 
Nikita's family will never be the same again. They were utterly shocked when Carl appealed his sentence. They have all struggled with this in different ways, but say they never want anybody to forget what he has done. They will always make sure people know who he is if he ever gets out of prison. Nikita's funeral was held at St John's Church in Newport, South Wales on the 9th of March 2011, just one month after she was taken from this world. Her white coffin was carried in by her father Paul and her boyfriend Ryan, along with other family members. Over 500 people attended Nikita's funeral and were all asked to wear a hint of pink in remembrance of Nikita. The service was over an hour long and even the Bishop of Monmouth attended the funeral and conducted some of the service. Nikita's family set up a sponsored walk in order to raise money for a mosaic shaped and coloured in a yellow rose in memory of Nikita. With Nikita, Kelsey May and Missy the dog's name written on it. It was hung on the wall of the Newport East Community Centre, which was located about 100 yards away from Nikita's flat, and was unveiled by the family and friend of Nikita. Children who attended the community centre helped design the mosaic art in memory of Nikita. In 2014, the family of Nikita applied to the Newport Council to demolish the flat of 51 Broadmead Park as it was a constant reminder of the horrible events of February 5th, 2011. This application was approved in December 2014 and the council began work to pull down the flat in January 2015. I would just like to say how sorry I am for the family and friends of Nikita and I would like to give my wishes and luck for the future they have to live without Nikita and Kelsey May. They said they would never come to terms with the tragic events and all they can do is make sure that Nikita and Kelsey may never get forgotten, nor the man who destroyed their lives. And that concludes today's case. I would like to thank everyone again for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it and would like to see more content, please like the video and hit the subscribe button. I will look forward to seeing you again soon.